This is the uh, segment that we were thinking of calling Drunk Without Power. Drunk Without Power. Mm -hmm. you, you'll see why mm -hmm. shortly. Yeah. So are we going to start with the pictures? Um, or should we just... Actually, yeah, just, just, a, just a tiny bit of description first. So it turned... So we... Uh, a week ago today, there was there was snow outside. There was snow on the ground, and we were saying, "Yeah, it's pre it's pretty rare for Portland, Oregon, to have snow on the ground." Um, and we had a series. It was either two or three distinct weather events: snow and ice storms that came through um, that came through Portland and Southwest Washington and a lot of Northwest Oregon. Um, and it wasn't. It certainly wasn't the largest weather event that this area has seen, uh, even um, you know, in living history, even. But it did cause the greatest power outage in Oregon history, actually, in terms of the number of power customers affected. So at one point, more than a third of Portlanders were out of power, and people from a lot of the surrounding areas lost power. A lot of people are still out of power. Um, our power went out um, mid morning on Valentine's Day, and we just got it back on Thursday. So we were out for four full days. Uh, for some of that time, our cell service was also out. I literally, in order to um, make sure that we didn't miss something, you know, in order to cancel something that needed to be canceled, I actually had to climb a hill to where I could get, you know, cell service from an adjoining tower because, you know, just everything in our neighborhood was um, was Basically, out. the power took out the cell the, uh, cell service because the, the towers weren't getting power either. And I'm sure they have some backup, but it didn't last. And it would, you know, suddenly we were cut off. It didn't last. Yeah, the cell towers didn't actually fall. Um, but many, many power lines were down, actually in the street, visible to us, multiple different streets within blocks of our home, lots of down trees and branches. Um, and f for me, some of what was super interesting, um, and yet we know this from ecology, is how patchy it was. Right, like there are areas near us that never lost power at all, and certainly if you don't live among the trees, you were less likely to lose power unless you were getting power from an area that that did have them, because a large part of what happened um, was trees falling on lines. Although that's not the only thing that happened. Yeah, so let's um, you know, for those of you who have not had the uh, the joy of experiencing an ice storm, let's just talk for a moment about what it is and why it happens. I'm, I'm thinking about people in Los Angeles who may have only sort of vaguely thought about this. Where, where we grew up, right. and right. until we moved to Michigan, we're somewhat well. I guess we both spent times in the time in the Sierras, so we we were familiar with ice storms already. But. Yeah, although ice storms uh, are a special weather condition. It's really a combination yeah. of weather conditions where um, things down here on Earth cool down below freezing, but they're warm enough at the point that the precipitation falls that it doesn't fall as snow. Um, it falls as liquid water very close to the freezing point. And then upon hitting very cold surfaces, it freezes and accumulates. And the thing about it is it's really heavy. And so um, my recollection is that when we lived in Michigan, ice storms happened. They caused damage. But in general, because power lines got too heavy, the trees were actually much better adapted to it. But because it's fairly rare out here in the Pacific Northwest, our trees they don't budget for it because that would be very expensive and reduce their competitive viability. So this is, and this is actually exactly, I think, one of the central points here that it's easy for people in places with reliably bad winter weather to mock uh, the regions of the country like Texas right now, like Portland uh, this last week, like Los Angeles whenever it rains even, right, um, for being unprepared and incapable of dealing. And um, it, it is true that socially, societally, like if, if you if you don't have experience, you know, driving in the rain, even rain is tough for you. If you don't have experience driving in the snow and ice, even that is difficult for you. And um, and that you know that is just a truth. And so you know, as it you you reported that apparently Portland has three snowplows. That is what I learned from the Portland subreddit, which is you know it seems super low, except most years it they, none of them get used. Right. So this this social truth by which humans tend to mock other humans is mirrored by a deeper and much older ecological truth, which is that the trees here, the trees, not the people, but the trees here don't tend to deal with ice buildup on their branches. And so whereas in Michigan, where ice storms, you know, some kind of ice storm happened every year, and we were just using Michigan because that ha is happen happens to be where we lived for eight years or something in grad school, um, the trees didn't explode. Right, like they yeah. they they dealt with it, and you still had power outages because power lines don't deal well with ice buildup. But the trees were better adapted to a situation because it was more common. And any place that you get extreme weather events that are not common, the organisms there are less likely to be able to deal with it. And so we have, you know, in Portland, a particularly you know, ridiculous situation um, because I think of the repeated freeze thaw cycles with so many so much buildup. But then 
you know, Texas, it's even more out of the ordinary what yeah. happened. And so, um, you know, they're, they're dealing with their own kind of hell as a result, not of, you know, them being incompetent, and, uh, but rather of the entire system, including the system absent humans, not having this as a regular feature of their lives. Yeah. In Texas, this can happen if three people leave their freezers open on the same afternoon, right? Um, it's a very rare thing for it to get cold enough you have have you, in fact, your... ever been in Texas? I, I have been to Texas. Yeah, I know. I've been there with you, but obviously yeah. that's not true. Right. No, that's... Oh, true. <laughs> Jeez. No, most jokes are not true. Yeah. Um, I don't even strive for it anymore. I just... No, I mean, I, I, obviously that was a joke, but like, you know, Texas gets cold the way the high desert in California, you know, gets cold, right? And yep. not, not all of it. You know, Texas is gigantic and Gulf Coast is different from, you know, up near the up near the borders with the mountain states. But... Um, but this level of storm was unusual. Yeah. But now my joke is just making me look dumb. Oh, I know what you're thinking. I'm not sorry. You're thinking many of them do. Is that is <laughs> no, that, no? No, I was just thinking, should I apologize? No, I'm no, not sorry. Don't apologize. Nope. All right. Um, so let, let's look at some pictures. Zach, do you yeah. want to uh, put up a, a series just to give people a sense? So, all right, here we have some ferns, and you can see there's a thick coating of ice on them. These are sword ferns. Uh, skip ahead one. Okay, here you see, you can really get a sense for how much ice is on the plants. This is a rhododendron, and, you know, there is a thick, it's like an inch thick coating of ice uh, on each of these leaves. And, you know, that's one thing if it's one branch, which is robust to wind, mm -hmm. and this branch is standing up to it reasonably well. But you can imagine scaling that up over an entire tree, how much extra weight the tree is dealing with in this circumstance. And I must say, we didn't get terrible wind this time. Sometimes mm -hmm. the combination of wind and ice storm happens, you know, it's every, I don't know, five years, maybe eight years. In the Pacific Northwest, we get such a thing. But that's really devastating too. All right, skip ahead one. All right, here you can see again, every branch, there's like multiple times the weight of the branch in ice sitting on the surface yeah. of the branch. Every surface was cold and they all accumulated it. Okay, here you can see a close up and I don't know if your screen's good, you can see the, um, the crystalline formations on the surface of this uh, ice. This is just a branch. It must be, you know, eight times as heavy as it normally would be. All right. And again, one more. Um, oh, sorry. Here, uh, I spent a lot of time trying to capture <laughs> a droplet falling off of one of these bits of ice. All right, and then here's what happens is the trees build up the ice. Some branch that was within tolerances is suddenly way above tolerances, collapses, and here one has landed on a power line and short-circuited it, and the power everywhere downstream of this is off, including um, the signals. And this was all over the place. Um, there were, you know, there were multiple entire trees down in many locations, often across the road. And the problem is that the, fr the system has become so fragile uh -huh. that, in fact, the power company initially was reporting very long periods of time in which they expected to repair it. And then they pulled all of their estimates. They stopped because, estimating altogether. Right. What they realized was that every time they got something, they found a problem and they hooked it back up, something downstream was short-circuited and they would pop that breaker. There was a branch they didn't realize on another power line that immediately short, shorted out a right. you know, number of houses. In fact, our power came back on for five minutes the afternoon it went out. And uh, and then we were plunged into darkness for another three and a half days. Yes. In fact, it came back <laughs> early and I believe my exact words were something like, um, I'll believe it if it lasts more than five minutes. And <laughs> That's then, about as long boom, as it lasted. Yeah, yeah. It went out again. Um, okay, uh, and then there's one more, which is the result of all of this, is here uh, we were in the dark, uh, <laughs> drunk without power. Mm -hmm. So, um, But with curry powder, apparently. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to have a beverage without curry powder. And this is the hot curry powder, by the way. Yes, of yeah. course it is.